Tonight on Y News, Vice President Lenny Robredo suggests the creation of a new anti-drug campaign to replace Oplan Tokhang. And the Philippine National Police hope President Rodrigo Duterte would name a new police chief before the year ends. Vice President Lenny Robredo suggests to scrap the PNP's Oplan Tokhang. She's also looking forward to working with President Rodrigo Duterte on solving the issue of illegal drugs in the country. Vincent Arboleda will tell us why. During her first meeting with the member agencies of the Interagency Committee on Anti-Illegal Drugs or ICAD today, Vice President Lenny Robredo stated her stand as a co-chairperson of the Committee for the Country's War on Drugs. She said she wants to scrap Oplan Tokhang, implemented by the Philippine National Police. The Vice President explained she subscribes to the knocking on the door dubbed as Tok Tok and searching, but... Because of the many senseless killings that accompanied Operation Tokhang, parang nakareach naka, naka siya ng certain level of uh, notoriety na pag sinabing Tokhang, it is a war against the poor. VP Robredo added that after more than two years of the anti-drug campaign and with a huge number of recorded fatalities, it is time to reassess the situation and the government's way of dealing with illegal drugs. Baka panahon na para pag-isipan natin yung pagpalit ng isang kampanya na mas epektibo pero walang namamatay senselessly. Though the President and the Vice President may have differences in perspective when it comes to the conduct of the drug war, VP Robledo admitted she understands they have the same goal, to win the drug war. She is also looking forward to working with the President on the anti-drug campaign. I want to look at it as a signal that the President is open to listen to a fresh perspective about um, the entire campaign. During the press conference held after the briefing with the ICAD members, VP Lenny said she wants to get more information on the data the ICAD members presented to her, which she said do not match the data other organizations have shown her. Vincent Arboleda, UNTV News and Rescue, Quezon City. The National Capital Region Police emphasize they are willing to accompany Vice President Lenny Robredo in anti-drug operations. Meanwhile, the NCRPO and the Dangerous Drugs Board have varying positions on zero casualty drug war. Leah Ilagan tells us why. The National Capital Region Police Office, or NCRPO, is willing to accompany Vice President Lenny Robredo in drug operations. NCRPO Chief Police Brigadier General De Boltinas made a statement after the country's second top official accepted the position as co-chair of the Interagency Committee on Illegal Drugs or ICAD. But of course, she's the Vice President before the Philippines. Sina says they are open to Vice President's suggestions. The NCRPO chief insists, however, zero casualty is impossible. Tayo din namin patayan. Pagka kami rin ay pinutukan una, we have to defend ourselves also. We will abide whatever the instructions of the Vice President. But hindi naman siguro sa manual namin pinagbawal na to defend ourselves in case of barinan. Sinas ensures they will practice the rule of law and respect human rights in every anti-illegal drug operation. The Dangerous Drugs Board, or DDB, meanwhile explains it is not in their policy to kill drug suspects. Kami rin ayaw namin nun eh. And it's never been part of the policy. Yung mga nangyayari na we believe na violation yan doon sa police operational procedure, sa rules of engagement, sa ating guidance. Secretary Kui believes that VP Robredo will play a huge role in the government's campaign against illegal drugs. Leia Ilagan, UNTV News and Rescue, Camp Krame. Supreme Court Chief Justice Diosdado Peralta assures they will take action on the alleged narco judges. The so-called narco list or list of personalities allegedly involved in illegal drugs includes 13 court judges and 10 prosecutors. According to Peralta, a recommendation on the matter has been submitted to the Supreme Court. He vows to immediately resolve the issue. 
Yeah, there were already recommendations submitted to the to the court and bank, and in due time, he will be coming up with some with resolutions on these uh, alleged uh, narco judges. ASOP Year 8 Grand Finals is a unique one as the 12 song entries have different genres according to the ASOP judges. There's rock, ballad, and R&B, pop, and others. One of the songs is Ikaw Ay Ikaw, which is said to be different from usual praise songs. Nina Armilio reports. Two English song entries, one Taglish, and nine compositions written in Filipino will battle in ASOP Year 8 Grand Finals. One of the Filipino songs is Ikaw Ay Ikaw, written by Van Duane Badwa. I wanted to write something na makarelate yung mga Pinoy. Ikay ka po, anang tinatangin, kailangan po, tanggalin man ako sa mga salitang ito. It won the January monthly finals. Well, the message of the song is basically everything will not make sense pag wala si God. Sana as people listen, they would see that talagang we really need Christ, we really need Jesus. Van Duane adds, people must give time to write songs dedicated to God. Definitely, all of the other things will fade away. Especially pag naging real na yung mga challenges sa buhay, talagang saan talaga tayo, where can we go? Watch Rada, the former lead singer of Kulai on the stage as she renders the grand finals version of Ikaw Ay Ikaw. Don't miss the night of music and praise offered to the creator on Sunday, 7 p.m. at the New Frontier Theater. Nina Armilia, UNTV News and Rescue. Welcome back to Why News. We pick up to where Angelo Castro the third left off. I'm Alex Baltazar, and here are the headlines. The Philippine National Police hope President Rodrigo Duterte would name a new police chief before 2019 ends. Food safety agencies conduct inspections on processed meat plants nationwide. Manila Mayor Isko Moreno Domagoso has signed the 2020 budget of the nation's capital amounting to nearly 18 billion pesos. President Rodrigo Duterte mulls over banning the use of plastic in the country. And find out how to easily detect fake money. Good evening. Philippine National Police Spokesperson Police Brigadier General Bernard Banak admits their operations will be affected if President Rodrigo Duterte does not name the next PNP chief until December 31st, whose names have floated as candidates for the PNP chief post. Found out from Joe Anano. Today is the retirement date of former PNP Chief Police General Oscar Albayalde as he turns 56. But until now, the president has not named Albayalde successor. PNP spokesperson Police Brigadier General Bernard Banak says the president needs to appoint the new PNP chief before the year ends. Pag pasok ng bagong taon ay may mga maapektuhan na mga malalaking projects ang PNP na kung saan ay kabilang dito ang mga malalaking procurement at kinakailangan na talagang merong uh, permanent chief PNP na siyang uh, lalagda sa mga kontrata. In an interview, the chief executive admitted he is having a hard time to choose the next PNP chief after General Albayalde's alleged involvement in the recycling of illegal drugs. The president is looking for an honest official, although he may be dumped in class. But who is the candidate for the PNP chief post? Aside from the three senior officials who are members of the command group named PNP OIC and Deputy Chief for Administration, Police Lieutenant General Archie Gamboa, Deputy Chief for Operations, Police Lieutenant General Camilo Cascolan, and the Chief Directorial Staff, Police Major General Guillermo Elizar, some other names have floated. One of those is the name of Police Major General Cesar Hawthorne Binat. Binag is now assigned in the Directorate for Information and Communications Technology Management or DICTM. 
He is from the PMA Hinirang class of 1987. He finished his master's in developmental management in the Asian Institute of Management or AIM. He completed a master's degree in public administration in the Harvard Kennedy Schools of Government, Cambridge, Massachusetts, USA. He became the Regional Director of Police Regional Office 6, Deputy and Acting Police Commissioner of the United Nations Mission in Liberia and a Commandant of the Philippine National Police Academy or PNPA. He is a member of the Board of Inquiry Operational Audit Team who investigates the Mama Sapano incident. Binag will retire on April 24, 2021. The name of his MISTA also floated Directorate for Operations Police Brigadier General Emmanuel Likuk. Likuk became the director of PRO4B or MIMAROPA. PNP spokesperson Police Brigadier General Bernard Banak says they are expecting that 10 days from now, on November 18, President Rodrigo Duterte will name the next PNP chief in the command conference. Nasa kapangyarihan ng Pangulo ang pumili ng sino ang kanyang pagkakatiwalaan na maging chief PNP. Uh, siya ay maaaring pumili sa sino mang mga opisyal ng PNP na may ranggo na Police Brigadier General hanggang pataas. The other names that have surfaced are Calabarzon Director Police Brigadier General Vicente Danao Jr. from PMA Sambisi Glass of 1991. Danao served as the Director of Manila Police District and became the CIDG Deputy Director for Operations. Next is Danao's MISA PRO11 or Davao Regional Director Filmer Escobal. He became the Police Security and Protection Group or PSPG Chief. PRO7 Director Police Brigadier General Valderion is also among the candidates. He became Chief of the Firearms and Explosive Office or FEO. De Leon is from PMA Makatao Class of 1989. Another is PNP Spokesperson Police Brigadier General Bernard Banak. He is from PMA Tanglao Diwa Class of 1992. Banak became the Assistant Chief of Supervisory Office for Security and Investigation Agencies or SOSHA before he became the PNP spokesperson. Joe Anano, UNTV News and Rescue. Water supply, scarcity, and the lack of toilets remain as two of the major challenges faced by the local government units affected by the series of earthquakes and aftershocks in Mindanao. Janice Inyenta details why. More than 2,000 families or over 11,000 individuals are still staying in evacuation centers in Kedapawan City three weeks after a series of earthquakes struck parts of Pindanao. 60% of the city's water supply were affected after a landslide buried its sources like dams and water springs. Fire trucks and water tankers from the local government supply water for the evacuees. However, it is not enough for their needs. They also fear of an impending health crisis. Wala kami CR, wala kaming tubig, at kailangan kami ng mga trapal, at saka simple financial, mga pagkain. Mahirap talaga sir, para sa akin, kaya matanda na ako. Taman may agas ng tubig pero morag na lisod kami magpila kay ibutang ni mo sa drum, dilip man mapundo, anak kinahanglan mag isa-isa kami. Poor sanitation is linked to the transmission of disease such as cholera, diarrhea, dysentery, hepatitis A, typhoid, and polio. But the local government assures they have enough medicine for the evacuees. According to Kidapawan City Mayor Joseph Evangelista, they are working double time to transfer the homeless families to a relocation site. But the mayor admits they cannot sustain feeding the evacuees. Bleeding tayo kasi 80 sacks of rice per day ang, ang niluluto natin. So, isipin mo ilang ilang libong tao yun, di ba? Mahirap kasi kung patuloy yan, bleeding masyado sa resources ng city government. Mm. So it would be best na pabalikin na natin, lead the normal lives, livelihood nila. About 25 hectares of land is needed to relocate the thousands of displaced persons from eight barangays. The city targets to finish the relocation in six months. The local government will also need almost 100 million pesos to address the earthquake victims' necessities. Janice Hente, UNTV, News and Rescue, Philippines. Several residents in the municipality of Matanao, Davao del Sur, affected by consecutive earthquakes in October that hit parts of Mindanao, have not yet returned to their homes. Dante Amento tells us why. 
Residents in Matanao, Davao del Sur, like in Barangay New Visayas, are temporarily taking shelter in tents just in front of their barangay hall. They fear that another earthquake might happen, so they have not returned to their houses. The barangay covered court is not used as an evacuation site because of cracks found on it. They also worry the barangay hall and a new building intended for senior citizens might collapse. Many of them have not received relief assistance yet from the government such as food and water. Dali, super, ito wala pa. Wala pa, naghihintay, naghihintay pa kami. Kasi ang DSWD, nagkulikta sila ng kulikta ng mga listahan namin kung ilang tao yung epektado. Some children in the area are suffering from cough and fever due to the changing weather conditions. Meanwhile, municipal employees are using the plaza as a temporary work area as another earthquake might happen again. After shocks were felt last night, in Barangay Kibao, it is not yet safe to drink the water supply because of possible bacterial contamination. The water source in the barangay had been destroyed. The municipal health office prohibits residents from drinking water from their water source as further tests must be conducted. Ah, uh, 100% positive talaga. Ah, okay. Pero hindi natin masasabi kung iko la yung bacteria na nandoon. Dante Amento, UNTV News and Rescue, Matanao, Davao del Sur. Manila Mayor Francisco Isco Moreno Dumagoso signs the 2020 budget of the Manila City Government. This is the biggest and fastest budget signed in the history of Manila, according to the City Council. Bernard Dades tells us why. Manilenos deserve more from the government, especially those who are in need. This is what Manila Mayor Francisco Isco Moreno Dumagoso believes as he allots 8 0.5 billion pesos or 48 percent of the city government's almost 18 billion peso budget for social services and other projects that focus on the city residents welfare the 2020 budget is almost 3 billion pesos more than the budget signed by manila's previous administration manila's budget for next year includes monthly financial assistance of 500 pesos for senior citizens persons with disability or PWD, solo parents, students in public schools, and grade 12 students of Universidad de Manila or UDM. 800 pesos birthday gift for more than 182,000 senior citizens and 1,000 pesos monthly allowance for over 17,000 pamantasan lungsod ng Manila or PLM and UDM students. The city government has also allotted 173 million pesos for its Nutriban project to provide nourishment to 50,000 malnourished kinder and grade 1 public school students. 6 million pesos will be allotted for centenarians who will receive 100,000 pesos each. Mayor Isco's vertical housing project for the poor will get a 300 million peso share. According to the Magoso, each building in the vertical housing project will reach 14 to 20 floors. Each two-room unit covers a 42 square meters wide area. Tao muna, bago kalsada. Dahil ang kalsada, walang kumakalam na si Kumura. Walang almoranas, walang rayuma, walang mararamdamang sakit. Hindi mga ngailangan ng anumang bagay na kailangan ng isang tao, lalo na ang mayroon. Meanwhile, the Department of Engineering and Public Works stops the budget allocation with 1.8 billion pesos, followed by the Office of the Mayor, which is 1.7 billion pesos. Third is the Manila City Health Department with 1.3 billion pesos. Fourth is the Department of Public Services with 1.2 billion pesos. And fifth, the Hospital ng Maynila Medical Center with more than 1 billion pesos. Bernard Dadis, UNTV News and Rescue, Manila. Philippine Overseas Employment Administration has discovered fictitious social media accounts that use the agency's name to offer malicious jobs abroad. Meanwhile, the U.S. Embassy in Manila City and its affiliated offices will be closed on Monday. Let's find out why from Asher Gadapan Jr. The Philippine Overseas Employment Administration, or POEA, warns Filipino job seekers against fake POEA accounts and pages surfacing on social media. According to POEA Administrator Bernard Olalia, the bogus accounts use the POEA's name and logo. 
The fictitious pages also advertise overseas jobs not verified and approved by the agency. The agency's administrator also named a few of the fictitious Facebook pages. Applicants are advised to verify from the POEA the validity of job offers through the online verification system on POEA's website or by calling the agency's hotline numbers. Meanwhile, United States Embassy Office in Ross Boulevard, Ermita, Manila will be closed on Monday, the 11th of November in observance of the American Veterans Day. Its affiliated offices nationwide will also be closed. The regular services will resume on Tuesday, November 12. Asher Kadapan Jr., UNTV News and Rescue, Philippines. The government stresses the African swine fever virus is not transmittable to humans. Authorities, meanwhile, continue to inspect pork and pork products nationwide as the holiday season nears. Ray Palayo explains why. The Food and Drug Administration or FDA and the National Meat Inspection Service or NMIS have jointly launched inspections on plants of processed pork nationwide. Health Undersecretary and FDA OIC Eric Domingo says they have inspected more than 60 out of the 178 meat processing plants in the country found negative for the African swine fever virus. The FDA asks the Department of the Interior and Local Governments support to monitor processed meat sold in the markets in cities and municipalities. Yusek Domingo says it's hard to identify products infected with ASF virus so it's practical to choose only the FDA registered brands. The health official stresses there's nothing to worry if a person has eaten ASF contaminated products. Huwag po silang matakot, hindi naman po ito nakakahawa ng sakit sa tao. Kaya po natin siya talaga pinigilan eh, kasi ayaw natin kumahalat sa iba pa pong hayop sa Pilipinas. During the holiday season, one of the food items much in demand is ham. Supermarkets Group President Steve Kua says their ham supply is about to arrive but the volume is less than that last year. What is a bit difficult to estimate right now is how much ham should you order and how much ham will people buy. Ray Pilayo, UNTV News and Rescue, Quezon City. As the holiday season fast approaches, lawless elements find their ways to victimize people through various modes of operation. One of these is money counterfeiting. Find out how to be sure your money is not fake. Let's watch this. At first glance, nothing seems to be wrong with these 500 peso bills. Looking closely, you will notice the marking errors and by feeling them, you will find their smooth texture. These are just some of the hundreds of counterfeit paper bills authorities seized from a man in Iloilo City yesterday. It's important not to be victimized by people who sell, use, and circulate such fake money. Here are some tips to make sure the peso bills in your pockets or wallets are genuine. According to Banco Central ng Pilipinas or BSP, the new generation currency banknote series currently in circulation has the latest technology security features that are easily identifiable and difficult to counterfeit. First, feel the texture of the numbers and lettering. These should be embossed markings. The paper itself should feel rough. Tilt the bill and look for the watermark. A security thread must be present. Look for the asymmetrical serial number at the upper right and lower left of the bill. Notice the security fibers and see-through mark. For 500 peso and 1,000 peso bills, there must be optically variable device patch in the left portion of the bill. To avoid getting confused with coins, just feel the edges. The 10 peso coin, which is the biggest in size, is milled with edge lettering that says Banco Central ng Pilipinas. The 5 peso coin has a plain edge, and the 1 peso coin has the intermittent reads on its edge. The BSP advises the public to report counterfeit money to authorities or call the agency through its official hotline numbers. Harleen Delgado, UNTV News and Rescue Manila. 
experts are in favor of prohibiting cigarette smoking in public places in the Philippines. Aiko Miguel clarifies why. Cough that doesn't go away, shortness of breath, coughing up of blood, chest pain, hoarseness of voice, unexplained weight loss, bone pain, and headache. These are the symptoms of lung cancer. Often people who experience this just ignore their condition until it reaches death. According to a group of Filipino medical oncologists, smoking is the primary reason for lung cancer in the country. 90% of lung cancer cases among Filipinos are caused by smoking for a long period of time. We are losing around close to 1.8 to 2 million deaths worldwide because of smoking alone. Kaya napakalaking bagay talaga yung awareness natin na mahuli yung lung cancer at an early stage at kung maaari na preventive kasi mas afford ng ating bansa yung prevention kasi pag umabot ng sa mga treatment expensive, may mahal na ang usapan. Though a person is a non-smoker, he or she can still acquire lung cancer through secondhand smoking or the inhalation of smoke from other people's cigarettes. Another factor is family history. According to experts, lung cancer is the leading cause of cancer deaths among Filipinos. This is why they are in favor of strengthening the prohibition of cigarette smoking in public places. They also subscribe to the United Nations recommendation to make cigarettes available in the market for adults aged at least 21 instead of 18. They also advocate prohibiting the sale of cigarette per stick. Na yung risk ng smoking uh, sa pag-cause ng, ng lung cancer mas tumataas talaga dun sa, sa duration ng paninigarilyo. So mas mahaba yung paninigarilyo at mas maraming sinisigarilyo. Yun yung tinatawag namin na pack years. Kung ilang packs, i-multiply uh, mo siya kung ilang years. Mas bata sila nag-uumpisa, mas madali silang magkaroon ng, ng, ng lung cancer. Ay ko Miguel, UNTV News and Rescue, Taguig City. And to complete the most significant news for this day, Why News continues, here are the top stories. President Rodrigo Duterte considers banning the use of plastics in the country. Give even Congress has begun to propose measures on such ban. Rosalie Cos details why. Filipinos use more than 163 million plastic sachet packets, 48 million shopping bags, and 45 million thin film bags daily, according to the study of Global Alliance for Incinerator Alternatives, or GAIA, a non-government environmental organization. GAIA also estimates the year's worth of sachet use in the Philippines can bury the entire Metro Manila one foot deep in plastic waste. The group also asserts single-use disposable plastic is the greatest obstacle to effective waste and resource management and the major cause of the plastic pollution crisis. Gaia pushes for a national legislation to regulate the use and production of plastics, especially single-use plastics, and to have other alternatives. We would appreciate kung yung Pangulo will tell Congress na i-prioritize nga itong uh, bill on single-use plastics. At dapat hindi lang tingnan as a waste um, disposal issue and waste management issue, pero titingnan yung buong life cycle ng plastic at lahat ng problema ang kaakibat nung um, um, different uh, stages ng production ng um, plastic. President Rodrigo Duterte has recently raised the idea of banning the use of plastics in the country. This was one of the issues discussed in the Chief Executive's 43rd Cabinet meeting in Malacanang on Wednesday night when an attached agency of the Department of Environment and Natural Resources reported on the priority programs for environment and climate change resiliency. However, the President said the proposal to ban plastic use would require a legislative action. Hindi ko exactly alam kung single use or basta sinabi niya lang na inclined siya na iban. Sir, bakit po na-raise yun? In connection with the climate change issue. Various bills on prohibiting the single-use plastic products are pending in both the House of Representatives and Senate. There will be a hearing before the committee level. All the stakeholders shall be heard and ultimately we shall decide the course 
the decision of the president will carry much weight in so far as the action of the House of Representatives is concerned. Rosalie Coz, UNTV News and Rescue, Quezon City. Meanwhile, among the components of the Manila Electric Company are Moralco charges on its customers in the bill deposit, but several groups question the legality of such charges. Joe Anano tells us why. A Maralco customer has brought up his concern to UNTV News and Rescue about his electric bill last month. The second page of the billing statement shows he is charged with additional 1,390 pesos and 78 centavos for the bill deposit program. The customer is now asking why he has to pay such added charge. Joe Saldariaga, the spokesperson of Meralco, explains bill deposit refers to the amount paid by the customers once they apply for a power supply connection. The power distributor clarifies this is not an additional charge. Well, the bill deposit, tulad lang yan ang pag-upa mo sa bahay, di ba? Meron uh, deposito na naiiwan sa utility company, in our case, in sa Meralco. So, kung sakaling umalis at hindi na bayaran yung huling bill ng customer, may pangahawa ka naman yung utility. Meralco explains they update their customers of their bill deposit status yearly. The amount of bill deposit depends on a customer's average monthly consumption. If the word of a customer's power consumption is lower than their bill deposit, Meralco will deduct that amount from one of their billings or return to the customer through a refund. But if a customer's average consumption exceeds the value of the bill deposit, Meralco will ask the customer to pay an additional amount which is similar to the case of the customer who has approached UNTV. Tulad nito, no, na meron siyang bill deposit na 550 pesos, uh, pero yung average monthly bill niya ay umabot ng 1,942. So pag in-update mo yan, uh, lalabas na meron siyang additional bill deposit na kailangan kolektahin. Pero ito ay hindi naman napupunta sa Meralco dahil deposito din ito nung customer. But according to former Bayan Muna Party List Representative Neri Colmenares, Meralco should not charge the bill deposit on their customers. So kumukolekta sila ng binyong bilyon para kunyari deposito mo yan kung hindi ka makabayas pero hindi kailangan. Paano yun? Saka <laughs> anong necessity noon? Kasi monopoly sila. Pangalawa, namumutol naman sila ng kuryente. Pag hindi ka makabayad, eh, so mapipilitan pa talaga magbayad at hindi mo na kailangan magdeposito dito. In April this year, Bayan Muna and other groups filed their petition to the Supreme Court seeking to stop Meralco from collecting bill deposit. The petitioners also asked for audit on Meralco's total collection on the bill deposit and urged the power distributor to return the bill deposit to consumers. The Supreme Court has yet to come up with a decision on the case. John Naro, UNTV News and Rescue, Kalaokan City. And for the news abroad, a New York State judge on Thursday ordered President Donald Trump to personally pay $2 million dollars for persistently violating state charity laws as part of a settlement in a civil lawsuit. The payment is the settlement and thus the final resolution in a case filed by the New York Attorney General's office after the Trump Foundation during Trump's 2016 presidential campaign organized a fundraiser for military veterans and collected almost $3 million that was subsequently dispersed on the eve of the Iowa caucuses at the direct of then campaign manager Corey Lewandowski. Judge Salian Scarpulia ruled that the two million US dollar settlement must be personally paid by Trump for breaching his judiciary duty to properly oversee the activities of the Trump Foundation. The foundation previously agreed to seize its operations and must pay the settlement to a group of nonprofit organizations. In other news, schools in Pakistan's second largest city have been forced to close because of dangerous levels of smog. Meanwhile, the 39 Vietnamese people found dead in a refrigerated lorry have all been formally identified. Kaf de Maraos has the details. In the United Kingdom, the 39 bodies found last month in a lorry container in the English county of Essex have all been identified as Vietnamese, UK police confirmed on Thursday. 
In a statement, Essex police said the relatives of the victims have been informed. On 23rd of October, 31 men and 8 women were found inside a refrigerating chamber of the vehicle in an industrial park in the town of Grace in southeast England. Authorities in Vietnam confirmed that the victims were Vietnamese nationals and specified the provinces that they had traveled from. Haiphong, Hai Duong, Nghe An, Ha Tin, Khoa Bin, Tua Tien, and Hu. The Vietnamese Ministry of Public Security added that the victims have been identified with the help of the British police and expressed their condolences to the relatives and friends of the deceased. Meanwhile, Lufthansa has cancelled 1,300 flights after it lost a last-minute legal bid to halt a strike by cabin crew. The two-day action over pay and conditions began at midnight local time. About 180,000 passengers are set to face travel disruption. The UFO union said it would hit all Lufthansa flights from German airports. Flights by Lufthansa's other airlines including Eurowings, Swiss, Austrian Airlines and Brussels Airlines are not affected, the airline said. Lufthansa has canceled 700 flights on Thursday and 600 on Friday, amounting to about one-fifth of its planned flights over the 48-hour period. And in Pakistan. The Pakistani city of Lahore closed schools on Thursday after an alarming rise in air pollution that made it to the world's most polluted city for a few hours, covered by a dark, toxic cloud. On Wednesday night, the concentration of PM2.5 particles was 580 per cubic meter in Lahore, making the city the most polluted in the world for a few hours, according to the Air Quality Index of the United States Environmental Protection Agency. By Thursday morning, rain and wind had dispersed the toxic cloud and the concentration of PM2.5 particles came down to the 138, which is still harmful. Punjab Environment Protection Department spokesperson Nasim ur rehman blamed the neighboring India for the burning of crop residue that increased the pollution levels. Tat Dumaraos, UNTV News and Rescue. Children in China have been banned from playing online games for more than one and a half hours per day or after 10 p.m. Users under the age of eight have also been prohibited from playing games that require payment. The rule was launched by Beijing this week in a bid to curb prevalent gaming addiction among the youth. A British team is testing the Bloodhound in South Africa, a supersonic vehicle designed to beat the fastest on-ground vehicle record. Jovic Burmas details why. British supersonic car Bloodhound has reached the 500 miles per hour milestone, hitting a top speed of 500 miles per hour in the South African desert. It was the car's seventh run as it tests ahead of its land speed record attempt in 2020, where it seeks to beat the 762.9 miles per hour record. The driver, current world land speed record holder Andy Green, is driving the Bloodhound faster on each run to gather data in order to prepare the car for its record attempt next year. On Tuesday, Mr. Green had clocked the top speed of 491 miles per hour, but encountered some minor bodywork damage. All going to plan, a land speed record attempt is slated for late 2020, and it might not end there, with the team also hopeful of eventually blasting past the 999.7 miles per hour mark. Jovic Burmas, UNTV News and Rescue. An amateur composer and a seasoned OPN singer joined together in a praise song entitled You Are Wonderful. This is one of the song entries in ASAP Year 8 Grand Finals on Sunday at the New Frontier Theater. Nina Armilio has more details. Lauren Bigas was overly delighted when his composition You Are Wonderful was hailed as a grand finalist in ASOP Year 8. France hails from Buhal. 
He's an avid ASOP viewer, so he has learned several songwriting techniques. But he didn't expect that his English song entry would win. God, you are faithful. Indeed, you are able. You are wonderful. Pasalamat po ako sa ating Panginoon Diyos dahil kung wala po siya, hindi po makakarating yan sa akin. Ako lang Writing a praise song doesn't only help the composer, but also the listeners. While Mark Ligo, the interpreter of You Are Wonderful, was also surprised when Francis' masterpiece was hailed the song June of the month. It doesn't rely on the song itself, it's still God's will. Mark says he will never tire in singing songs of praise. Kasi galing naman sa kanya yung, yung kapasidad na to, yung capability of singing. So, singing this way enables me to give back in the way that he gave me. Witness the live performance of You Are Wonderful in ASOP Year 8 Grand Finals at the New Frontier Theater on Sunday, 7 p.m. The online voting and power viewing for your favorite grand finalists ends at noon on Sunday. UNTV News and Rescue. And those are the reasons behind the news this November 8, 2019. On behalf of Alex Baltazar and Angelo Castro III, I am William Theo, and before we close, we will recap with today's significant sound bites. Because we need to know, we will always ask why. Good evening. Parang nakareach siya ng certain level of uh, notoriety na pag sinabing tokhang it is a war against the poor. Baka panahon na para pag-isipan natin yung pagpalit ng isang kampanya na mas epektibo pero walang namamatay senselessly. Pinayo din namin patayan. Pagka kami rin ay uh, pinutukan una, we have to repent ourselves. So, we will abide whatever the instructions of the Vice President. But, uh, hindi naman siguro sa manual namin pinagbawal na to defend ourselves in case of balita. We also allow uh, meritorious uh, motion for extension and we understand her predicament. I hope that she will no longer ask for another extension so that before the end of the year that those cases will be finally decided. Tao muna bago kalsada. Oh, dahil ang kalsada Walang kumakalam na si Kumura. Walang almoranas. Walang rayuma. Walang mararamdamang sakit. Hindi mga ngailangan no, ng anumang bagay na kailangan ng isang tao, lalo na ang may. We would appreciate kung yung Pangulo will tell Congress na i-prioritize nga itong uh, bill on single-use plastics. At dapat hindi lang tingnan as a waste um, disposal issue and waste management issue, pero titingnan yung buong life cycle ng plastic at lahat ng problemang kaakibat nung um, um, different stages ng production ng um, plastic.